As the world digitizes, the proliferation of data created by each of us in the course of our everyday lives has become an increasingly valuable commodity. In Australia, the phased introduction of open banking is creating new possibilities for consumers to securely share their banking data with other financial institutions, enabling access to a broader range of products tailored to them. And Illion has been at the forefront of that market shift. Open banking is a global megatrend. Um, it's now in over 30 countries, including Australia. And it's the first instance of Australia of what's called the consumer data right. So think of it as a, a, a human right uh, around data. Your data is yours, it's yours to do with as you possess. It's not the, in the case of open banking, belonging to the financial institution that you bank with. Now, why, why are we doing this? It's so that new data hits the market, the information asymmetry between the largest banks and the fintechs gets eliminated. More decisions can be made in an automated manner, more cheaply, uh, and, and in a, a, with better predictive analytics. My business, Illion, is at the centre of that. We're accredited both to help consumers through our FinTech Credit Simple and financial institutions through our Open Data Solutions Division. So we're at the heart of this new digital economy, and it's probably the biggest revolution in credit for 30 years. So we've gone through three waves of innovation, ingestion, categorization, and now analytics. So the original challenge was to extract information from, in Australia, about 150 banks, and do so elegantly and quickly. Then the battleground moved to categorization. So of those billions of transactions, are they rent, are they income, are they uh, uh, discretionary expenditure? Are they something that you, you must spend? We're now in the third wave, analytics. So we've taken billions of transactions from millions of people and hundreds of banks and discovered about a thousand variables that are predictive of risk. And some examples of that, if you take a lot of your salary out of an ATM on the day you're paid, you're risky. If you have a postpaid mobile phone, you're less risky than somebody who has a prepaid. If you pay by direct debit, you're more likely to be good than bad. So these have all gone into our new algorithm, the Illion Transaction Risk Score, which is highly predictive of risk. So open banking is a very overt process. Um, privacy and trust are hugely important. So it's been designed with, it's, it's privacy by design. What does that mean? It means when I as an individual am sharing data, it's clear who I'm sharing it with, why I'm sharing it, and for, for how long I'm sharing it, and for what purpose. So the idea here is that the individual trusts the system, they know exactly where their data is going, and it's all underpinned by the highest standards of information security. I think how the marketplace will evolve in a post-open banking world is a very interesting question. Firstly, um, it will eliminate some of the information asymmetry that exists between the largest organisations and the small new fintech entrants. So to take myself as an example, my big four bank has known me for 15 years, they've seen my salary, they see what I spend, and they will have formed the view as to my credit worthiness. A fintech who might produce a great product that I would like, there's no way they can know that. However, in an open banking world, I can pick up my information, I can give it to that fintech, and they can make a data-driven decision and price me for the product that I want. So the first thing that's gonna happen is an elimination of that gap or reduction of that gap between large and small. And fundamentally, that's going to give more choice to consumers and better prices for consumers. So this global mega trend where your data is yours to do with as you wish is going to um, invade several other value chains. Telecommunications and energy are obvious ones. I think the industry that's going to go through a lot of change is insurance. With insurance, there's a historic data moat. Um, I, I, you know, my claims history is known, my risk is known, uh, the pricing isn't necessarily clear. If I can pick up my insurance information and I can start to go around to several insurers and see the price that is right for me, then I think that's going to be quite a dramatic change to that industry.